Hello, everyone. My name is Paula Camperman, and I'm the Outreach Program Manager for the Bennington County Solid Waste Alliance, and I'm joined today by Event Management Consultant Peg Mulligan. Good morning, everyone. We'll be talking today about managing a successful waste diversion program during an event to eliminate your headaches, and that also conforms to Vermont State Recycling Law. As we go through this webinar, if you have any questions, feel free to click on the Q&A or chat button at the bottom of your screen. And uh, so you know, all the materials that we mentioned in this uh, webinar and the links will be included in a follow-up email to you in a recording uh, that you'll receive tomorrow. We'll also post it on our YouTube page. So let's get started. Some of you are hearing about the Alliance for the first time, so I'll give you a little background. The Alliance was formed in 2015 to assist participating towns in reducing solid waste disposal at landfills by reducing the amount of waste generated, conserve resources and promote recycling and reuse. The Alliance also provides education and outreach to businesses, schools, residents, to help achieve the Alliance's goal to reduce the amount of material people in our area send to landfill while increasing the amount of material diverted from landfills for recycling and reuse. Some reason our system is not advancing here. The Alliance is made up of 13 towns, Arlington, Bennington, Dorset, Glastonbury, Manchester, Palmel, Rupert, Sandgate, Searsburg, Shaftesbury, Stamford, Sunderland, and Woodford. The towns of Peru, Reedsboro, Londonderry, Landgrove, and Winhall, while in Bennington County, are not members of the Alliance. All of the businesses, residences, schools, and organizations located within the Alliance can take advantage of our services. Services the Alliance provides include solid waste audits, where we visit your organization and review waste management practices and offer technical assistance in managing solid waste. This could include review of current recycling laws, provide sources to recycling items banned from the landfill, provide communication pieces and signing about recycling, and suggest ways to possibly lower your solid waste hauling costs. We used to host household hazardous waste collection events, and are transitioning now to a permanent collection facility that will be located at the Bennington Transfer Station, which is expected to open next month in June. We provide source information for the disposal of banned items such as computers and electronics, fluorescent bulbs, and paint through special recycling programs. Most of this information is available on the Alliance website. We also provide community outreach through presentations to groups and the public about recycling, composting, and waste reduction. To understand why Vermont diverts organics and other materials for recycling, we'd like to give you a little context. Nearly half of all the waste produced globally is either organic or biodegradable. When sent to a landfill and allowed to degrade anaerobically, that means without the presence of oxygen, methane is produced, which is 21 times more powerful than carbon dioxide at trapping heat in our atmosphere. The increases in greenhouse gas emissions is responsible for our climate change. So when we reduce the amount of waste we generate, we reduce our new traditional landfill space by reducing our carbon footprint. Vermont's universal recycling law adopted a food recovery hierarchy you see in this graphic into law in 2012 to draw attention to our use of food and help guide consumers into making the highest and best use of their food. The most preferred method at the top you see is source reduction followed by food for people, then animals, then composting. When we reduce our consumption of food and thereby reduce the amount of food scraps generated in the first place by shopping smarter, strategically planning meals with the foods we have on hand, less of our food goes to waste. Event organizers know careful planning is the key to a successful event. 
Dramatic changes have occurred in recent years with Vermont recycling law that impacts waste management, especially during events. July 2020, the single use plastics ban went into effect, banning the distribution of plastic bags, drawers, straws, only providing them to requests or to customer requests, and styrofoam. In addition to the food scrap ban enacted in 2020, requiring Vermonters to divert organics from landfill. Vermont state law requires the separation of trash, recyclables, and organics, even at events, whether it is a small family reunion in a park or a large musical festival with 20,000 attendees. Today, I'm going to provide guidance on how to set an effective waste management program for your next event. The Alliance website, bcwa.org, has a planning guide, vendors, and downloadable bin signing for event organizers. We also provide free technical assistance to your event and in advance of our to organizers in advance of the event. We encourage you to visit our website to explore all the resources available and contact us directly with questions or needing assistance. Our co host of today's webinar, Peg Mulligan, is also available by email to consult with planning or layout, staffing, and other logistics related to your event. And now I'll turn it over to Peg. So let's begin with some preliminary planning. The suggested timeframes we mentioned during today's presentation will vary depending on the size of your event. For illustrated purposes, we're planning for a one or two day event with about 5,000 to 10,000 attendees. A much smaller event will not need as long a lead time for planning. For vendors, six to eight months in advance of your event, you'll want to set and communicate the rules for vendors of what materials can be used for public consumption of food, such as plates, cups, utensils. All the serving materials used by the food vendor should be BPI certified compostable only so that food and their serving materials can be disposed together to, to create compost yet not leach harmful chemicals into finished compost and later into the environment. There are a lot of certified compostable materials available for sale that meet the requirement for proper breakdown in a commercial composting facility, but often have leak barriers or coatings that are made with PFAs or other chemicals that are harmful to the environment. The compost facility in Bennington, where organics are sent from our region, only accepts BPI certified compostable material with its organics. The website bpiworld.org has an extensive list of product manufacturers of compostable serveware that you can use to have vendors verify that their materials are truly compostable. If your vendors only provide compostable serveware to customers, something like uh, wooden steerers, um, bamboo sporks, uncoated paper plates, and compostable cups. You will have less trash to haul away as the material that would have previously gone to the landfill now is usable organic material. Your hauler charges you a, harder, a higher rate for trash than for organics. Achieving this standard during your event may reduce your hauling costs. More on this specific topic can be found at our website bcswa.org and bpiworld.org. As a side note, consumer materials marked biodegradable are not necessarily compostable as they need different conditions to break down properly. They may be made of plastic and should not be considered a suitable substitute for conventional plastic serveware when the material is to be commercially composted. Food vendors often make purchasing plans well in advance of event season and buy in bulk. Giving them as much notice as possible will make their transition to the accepted materials easier. Many, if not most, large events are requiring certified compostable materials. Some even require vendors purchase materials from an approved list of certified compostable materials directly from the organizer. Five to six months in advance of the event, you'll wanna start finalizing the layout with a rough estimate 
of the number of vendors in mind to determine the number of volunteers required to manage solid waste. Estimate your expected attendance and the size of your event's footprint to determine how many waste sorting stations you'll need to set up. Think through how waste is to be collected and how collected material is to be brought through crowds during the event and where you're staging the bulk waste collection, such as dumpsters or rollaways, prior to pickup by your hauler. Keep in mind a hauler may not pick up material into a, until a day or two after the end of the event. Is the collection staging area still appropriate after the event is ended? By creating a site map for all staff volunteers to work from showing traffic flow, vendor layout, and staging areas will provide consistent information and a good working document to plan with for the following year. Here's an example of an event map. It's the public map for Garlic Town, USA, showing locations of waste collection stations, noted with the blue waste can symbol. To limit the number of waste stations required, it is best to group food vendors together with waste stations nearby. This will also limit litter. For larger events, we recommend additional stations near exits. Your waste station is a place where there's a lot of activity and one that should be given some thought in planning. Setting aside a 10 foot by 10 foot area with a canopy for each collection station will keep volunteers protected from the elements. Use three collection bins, one for each stream of waste, one each for organics, recycling, and trash, plus extra bins to swap out while waste is being brought to the staging or dumpster area. Ideally, these bins should be color-coded or well-signed, green for organics, blue for recycling, and black for trash, and is consistent with Vermont's Universal Recycling Program. An additional collection bin may be needed to collect redeemables if they're dispensed by on-site vendors. Larger events would benefit from using large signage on the canopy roofs and or feather flags for the public to easily identify the waste stations on site. Many haulers provide customers with wheeled totes, bag frames, and barrels as part of their hauling services, but you may need to supplement your supply to have enough to change out bins while emptying waste. Here are some examples of color-coded signing. Using bins colored blue for recycling, green for composting, and black for trash, reinforce the public's understanding of sorting in public spaces and should reduce your contamination by making it easier for the public to identify and sort its material. These symbols are used throughout Vermont and have become familiar with the public. The Alliance has a supply of vinyl stickers of the symbols and laminated bin signs available for organizations. Volunteers posted at wait stations Waste stations guiding attendees on how material is to be sorted will also reduce uh, contamination. How many waste stations you have will depend on the number of attendees and how spread out the event is. Example, four stations for 10,000 attendees. Keep in mind, fewer stations may require more frequent swap out of bins. We suggest using a gator type vehicle a pickup or other small four-wheeled vehicle to empty waste stations regularly during the event. Volunteers posted at waste stations guiding attendees on how material is to be sorted. On now on to contact. Okay. Volunteers posted at waste stations guiding attendees on how material is to be sorted will also reduce contamination. How many waste stations you have will depend on the number of attendees and how spread out the event is. Example, four stations for 10,000 attendees. Keep in mind, fewer stations may require more frequent swap out of bins. We suggest using a gator type vehicle, pickup or other small ve wheeled vehicle to empty waste stations regularly during the event. Now on to now on to contacting contracting with your hauler. 
two to three months prior to your event, ask prospective haulers about the receptacles they provide. Do they provide various sizes of roll-offs or dumpsters? Will they provide you with enough barrels or rolling carts so you have spares to swap out while emptying receptacles? Will you need to use wood shavings to cover the organics prior to pickup? What ways can you keep your hauling costs low and how soon will the waste material be picked up after the end of your event? Keep in mind that vermin are easily attracted to open containers such as roll-offs or material left outside the dumpsters. The property owner or municipality where you're hosting the event may have strict policies about when the material must be removed and you should communicate that to the hauler prior to the event. Usually the cleaner the recycling and organics collection that is free of contamination, the lower your hauling costs may be also. Now on to volunteer recruitment. When looking to staff your event, the overall goal is to build a core of repeat volunteers who return each year for the event. Since managing trash isn't a sexy task, finding folks who already have an interest in the subject is best. Organizations that foster stewardship of the environment, groups who enjoy the outdoors, civic youth groups, high schools that require volunteer hours prior to graduation, and other social organizations are good sources for finding volunteers. Individuals with bee allergies need not apply. A minimum of two people per collection station should be staffed at a maximum of a four hour shift per day. Keep in mind you need relief staff for bathroom breaks, meals, and teams to collect waste material. A schedule should be drawn up to cover everyone who volunteers. Use all your sources for recruitment, such as social media, mailing lists, announcements at public events, church bulletins, press releases, etc. Entice volunteers by offering that in exchange for their time, they'll receive things like a free, free admission to the event, a volunteer t-shirt, training, and food vouchers on the day of the event. Some event organizers of larger established multi-day festivals or other high ticket priced events collect credit card information and charge volunteers unless they show up to work their shift. To orient volunteers, gather them together and perhaps host a dinner such as a pizza party a day or two before the event to review instructions, provide police department safety briefing as needed, and perhaps a setup example of the bin sorting system to practice a dry run. And don't ever forget to thank them for their service. Each waste station requires materials for the safety and comfort of its volunteers. Bottled water or access to bottle filling stations, aprons, a box of nitrile gloves for each station, hand sanitizer, paper towels, and bee spray. A first aid kit should be on hand for the event as well. Teams collecting waste material who are swapping out bins should be your physically strongest individuals and will need bag liners and heavier gloves if handling large bins. Most haulers don't accept bagged recyclables, but check beforehand with your hauler. It is, re is, it is recommended that smaller bins, such as 20 to 30 gallons, should be used to collect organics and not to let them get more than three quarters full as they get quite heavy. They may also need to be switched out more frequently to keep insects under control during warmer days. Remember to keep notes throughout the event planning process and execution to remember what works and what doesn't to improve your outcome for next year. This also includes noting forces outside your control during the event that may have impacted attendance such as weather or other nearby events coinciding that contributed or reduced your attendance figures. We also suggest visiting other similar events in other communities to see how they manage their solid waste. That completes our presentation and we'll now answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Right, what I'm gonna do now is uh, leave it open for anyone that wants to uh, make any questions posted in the Q&A, and also just um, add some more embellishment to the 
topics covered that we had during the presentation here. Um, one thing I wanted to note that in some of the examples we made with um, providing statistics of how many waste sorting stations you have at each event, a lot of it has to do with the volume of food that is being produced naturally. There's some events that are strictly just food oriented, you know, they're food mm -hmm. festivals and others are more focused on arts or entertainment and the food isn't the center of the event. In that case, there's gonna be more consumption. On Absolutely. Site. You may need to bring up those counts of sorting stations if your event is more food centric. Naturally. Absolutely. Um, I don't know if there's anything you can add to that in your own experience. Yeah, well, yes, um, there are the more, the larger the event, and as you said, if it's mostly a food-centered um, event, requires more stations, but it's also, it's very handy to have them um, in places that are easily accessible to visitors at the site and at the event. Um, and it makes it easier for visitors to put their waste in the right places. Um, when, as regards Garlic Town that I have worked at, it's sort of equally divided between crafts and that kind of thing and food vendors. Yeah, so it's like a 50-50. It's like, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So tell me, in your experience, what have been some of the biggest uh, challenges you've had with just, you know, um, coordination, the day of the event, and maybe some things leading up to that, you're, that you've found that has been challenging, but that you found some some tricks that you can share with us that's been helpful? Well, I find that it's our hardest, the hardest thing for us to do is to find volunteers who want to do this task. So you know that people who do commit to it are um, are devoted to, to um, making sure that the waste stream is handled properly. Um, another thing that, I, that I've noticed that people were very interested in at Garlic Town last year is that many of the volunteers also prefer uh, served as educational um, sources for people who would come up who had not necessarily, maybe people from out of state who hadn't had this kind of collection in their states. And so the volunteers were very happy to introduce children and adults as well to which bins to put their food scraps or their, their waste or compost, whatever in. Um, and people seem to be very open and um, and enthusiastic about about knowing where to put the their garbage properly, garbage trash, whatever recycling. So that was very that was very rewarding to see that, I have to say. Good. Um, I know also that in the preparation of this um, presentation today, you had mentioned that, you found working with uh, the haulers to be a great resource of information. Oh, absolutely. Got so many different types of yes. events that they've had to supply materials for. Yes. Um, can you comment on that at all? Yes. When I first started working with Garlic Fest, um, I worked with Trevor up at TAM, which is now was acquired by um, by Casella. And Trevor was, was sort of in... A, at the ground floor with the sustainable and responsible sorting of waste. Um, so that was really an education for me. Um, I've been recycling myself for years and years, but um, the fact that the hauler, the company themselves were really invested in this process um, really made things e easier for us. They were always open to communication and questions. Um, I always met with them frequently. Now I work with Joe McGuire. Um, who works from Casella and everybody has been, the fact that the hauler was totally committed to the process um, made it much easier to work out. Yes, and uh, there are of course other haulers out there that do provide yeah. service as well. And I know some of them have different types of containers, color coding systems um, that don't necessarily follow the line of you know trying to use a, a green bin to identify as organic, a blue bin that's got a top or some kind of color mm -hmm. that's they may just all be one color. And in that aspect, I think there's got to be an even greater reliance on signing of the bins to help people understand. Uh, in my experience, just walking around at different events and watching human behavior uh, when they get to the point of sorting material, they'll be standing in front of a three bin system with a plate of whatever's left on their food on the plate and their utensils. 
and they'll take about a second, maybe two, to try to figure out how to sort something. And it, if it isn't really clear, it ends up just getting in the wrong bin. And that's what you wanna to try to avoid. So the volunteers there are gonna help you make your job easier when you're contracting with your hauler to be able to give them the most, um, the cleanest material without the amount of uh, contamination that makes it just all trash in the end. Um, and then if you've got volunteers there to guide them, then they're putting it in the right stream. Even if you don't have volunteers, it's really important to make sure that you've got the um, signing on the bins on the top and on the front of the bins as people approach the, the waste stations to know that that all is got a special spot and they know where to put it. Um, you know, if we get to a point where you want to work with us, we can sit down and uh, go through the the specifics of your event to help tailor make even the signing if necessary. If you've got some material that is compostable, some that's not, um, the signing that we typically offer events uh, organizers can be customized to show materials if you've got photos of some of the things you're using uh, to help guide people to make sure that that compostable material ends up with the rest of the food scraps in the organics uh, green bin that is then taken up and turned into compost later. Same thing if you've got um, uh, paperwork or paper materials that you know are compostable or not, and you need to make sure that it doesn't bit get included as a compostable item, then you know you can list it on a paper uh, poster that we make, listing it as not a compostable item. So. Uh, we're ready to work with you in any way, uh, shape, or form. As I mentioned, PEG is also available to help people just understand workflow, getting teams together, um, how to do the layout that we showed, uh, for example, of uh, Garlic Fest this year. That is actually just one clove, one portion of their festival. Uh, and we know the events that we that are hosted around here come in all shapes and sizes. You know, some of them are just a couple hours long, some are multiple days. Um, and they all have their own special needs. So we're happy to help whenever you need it. Uh, feel free to reach us at this uh, uh, telephone number and email for myself and email for um, Peg. You can also just uh, reach us through our website at bcswa.org. And uh, we don't have any questions. So feel free to get us a hold of us after the webinar if you like. Otherwise, we thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, Look forward to talking to you soon. And I make oh, one, yeah. Can I make one comment? I wanted to say that after the event, it's always nice to contact your hauler and ask them, you know, for a report card, basically. How did we do? How was our trash? How was our, was our compost clean? Was our recycling clean? Because it really, it helps to pass that information on to the volunteers because it is a hard job. And I think they're very... They're pleased to hear that their efforts were not in vain when, because when they're out there for four hours um, collecting the waste from our visitors, um, it really helps to know that they were successful in their attempts. Excellent point. I'm glad you brought that up. That's good. Okay. Uh, I guess that's about it then. Thank you all very much for joining us and we'll see you out there at your events and good luck. Thank you. Bye-bye.